Arsync. Arsync. Uh, Mug Greg June 2014. Arsync. How many people use RSync? Wow. You're damn full if you don't. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully what, what I'm looking for is the type of a, of a topic where we might start talking about RSync and then people in the audience can show us what they do with it. That's, yeah, like we're uh, that's, that's where we get to. I very rarely use CP. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I have to say though that that is a very cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just my my fingers are so used for so to, uh, for to them. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, there is a there is a post about the curse of them, and uh, I think it's true. Basically, any any editor that you go into, any program that you go into, uh, you I, I have typed in KKK more than I can care to admit. <laughs> JJJ, etc. Anywho, rsync. So, hand, show of hands again, how many people have used rsync? Okay, this should be all half of you, but for the rest of you that haven't been converted yet, let us describe the problem. The problem is you got a lot of stuff on your disk in various places all over the network, and you needed to get that stuff from point A to point B. Tools that you may be using right now are not the best tools in the world. And there are ways to get things around. You can use a tar ball, <laughs> you know, that big old mess, you know. The, the, there's a few switches, you know, the, uh, the XKCD comic that said that you need, uh, there's a bomb, and the only way that you can defuse it is to learn, you know, to show tar switches. And everyone's like, I'm so sorry. No. no. This is, this is easier. I will show you an easy way to do this. And the problem with TAR is that TAR is a great tool, but it has a problem with scale. You know, you get a really large TAR ball, you can G-zip it maybe a little bit, you know, knock it down maybe 20% or so. Uh, B-zip 25%, depending on the data that's in there. But it, you can get some very large files and you can get yourself into some major problems. So one way problem that you also have is move. How many people are guilty of two drives on your system, you move a file from one drive to the other? That is stupid. Don't be this guy. Oh, hold it. What do you mean by move? Move. I mean MV. Oh, no. No? No. no? Arsic. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> because something happens, you know, you're in the middle of a move, you're moving a whole bunch of files between directories, between drives, and something happens, the plug comes out of the computer, uh, you have a power outage, and the UPS that you were, you were assured was tested doesn't fail over in enough time. Things happen, and if you do a move between two different drives, you don't know what's on which drive or whatever. You hope that it's all, that you know, there's at least something recoverable in that whole mess. So don't be this guy. Don't be the meathead that goes through <laughs> and does move between drives. Don't do that. Well, you can do copy, you know, and that's that's real efficient. Uh, you can copy files between, you know, there's SCP where you can copy things from remote machines. Uh, you can do copy between things, between drives and then delete the old drive. That's a mess. 
And what happens if copy uh, fails in between? Then you, you know, you get into that weird state again. Our sync is beautiful. Our sync is the most beautiful command that you can learn today. Besides Sublime, that's the other beautiful command. <laughs> today. So the very basic command you need to know with our sync is our sync dash a v i p your source and your destination. Don't use the IP. How do you? Well, you don't necessarily need to use the IP, but I'll show I you use why. I Z instead. I'll show you why. It's an easy mnemonic to remember. When you use rsync, you are A V I P. <laughs> what do those command switches mean? You have A for archive. V is for verbosity, so it prints out what it's doing. I shows an itemized list of changes that are. Uh, that will show uh, what's going on during the uptake. And P is for preserving permissions, if you necessarily want to do that or not. Most well, of the time I don't. A actually it. preserves the permissions. As well? Yes. Okay. You don't need the P there. Right. But it works better like this because you feel like you're, you're, a, VIP you're a VIP. So when you say itemize the changes, the changes of what? Well, the changes between the, each the of the different machines. Yeah. The same as being our sync yes. and the newer version. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and if you're doing it across a slow lane, put a Z on the end of it. Yes, right. and it will compress. I usually don't do that because uh, most of the time I'm on a fast enough link. If I'm doing... It just slows you down. Yeah, yeah it's basically it's, it's CPU versus network speed. And usually if I'm doing rsync, I'm on a good network because our, there's there's two things that rsync does very well. Number one, it, it makes sure that it is as efficient as possible. And the second thing that it does is it uses your CPU like a mother. It will use your CPU and it will use your disk I.O. like crazy. It will use your memory. It will it will expand to whatever space you give it. Whatever resource it can find. Yes, exactly. I've, I've had, I've had uh, uh, backup copies in that where my machine is basically a dog right afterward because it, it uses all that stuff. So let me do a quick demo of, uh, of our sync in action. Is I different than dash dash progress? Uh, a little bit. Okay. A little bit. So I'm going to show you a script that I have. Yeah. Give it a directory for yourself. You idiot. Alright, so first thing that I do is I'm gonna use my machine at home, decap uh let's try it uh.decapbad.net and I've been, I'm going to go against my mnemonic just a hair I use dash AIV and then I use dash dash progress uh, the command dash dash delete make sure that any stray files that are hanging out there get removed so it's basically a one-to-one -one copy and I'm using SSH now one issue with rsync is that SSH slows it down uh, considerably and uh, the reason being is that SSH is doing encryption and all that other wonderful stuff that SSH does. So it's not going to be nearly as fast. There's ways around that. Uh, you can use an RC daemon, which creates its that's own. That's what I'll be showing. That's what you'll be showing, yeah. I'm not going to get into that because that's way too heavy for what I'm doing. Um, the second thing is that um, I don't like to have as many exposed ports to the outside world. One is enough. SSH. Where are you using SSH? I don't see a minus C on there. I'm using SSH. The, uh, the address colon that yeah. way. All right. Now let me show you this thing in action. Because you have SCP syntax. Yes. Uses SSH. Yes. As, okay. Yes. I still have to put in the minus E space SSH. So this is going through and going through all my books, making sure that there's they're synced up. And this is going to take a little bit while uh, long, so I'm not going to wait for it too much. But basically, I I started it before, and it's recopying from where it started off. Cool. Uh, not going to wait for it. So I have a control C on that. So this is copying over some backgrounds that I deleted because I wanted to do a demo. And because I trust rsync so implicitly that it's going to replace things the way that it was. 
So there you go. Um, it's really straightforward. I mean, the, there's not a whole lot that I can show you. I'm, I'm not going to explain the R-Sync algorithm because it's done by very smart people who know what the heck they're doing. Um, Wayne Davison is the person who maintains R-Sync. I worked with him over at SourceForge. He is a brilliant person. He's a very patient person. He is one of those folks that you are very glad that he's working on our side because he probably could destroy the entire world ten times over. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Yeah, he's, he's that good. Uh, so, any questions about uh, this quick overview of our sync and how it works? Yes. So it sounded like you said it had automatic restart, so it knows where it was. And yes. What it does is it creates a dot file. Um, and this is this is kind of important for folks. Uh, it creates a dot file of the changes that it's going to be copying over. So it, if you're, um, let's say you have like a halfway uh, copied over file, it will create a dot file of each of the changes, keep adding to that dot file, and then eventually replace that. Um, the problem is that if you don't have a whole lot of disk space or something like that, you can get yourself into real problems uh, very quickly. Uh, so the thing, again, our sync plus resources, give it disk, give it CPU, give it memory. It will be very efficient with that. Give it as much network as you possibly can. But understand that it will, it will expand to fill the, uh, the need. <coughs> Keep questioning because I need one minute. <laughs> so, okay, I got, I got one. So, yeah. well, so if I, if I understand correctly, that, that seems like the only... Uh, surface level benefit over like secure copy? I, well, the the better uh, reason for using RSync over secure copy is if you're if you're doing a whole bunch of files and you want to make sure that they're exactly uh, copied over and you want to be able to resume if something goes wrong. Let's say you're right. on a really shitty connection um, and you just want to make sure that that copy gets over there correctly. That's where you would use RSync. If you're doing like a handful of like text files or something like that, you may want to just use RC uh, secure copy or SFTP or something like that. I don't use RSync all the time. You should. I do. Yeah, I mean it's it is a great tool. It's just sometimes it can feel a little over, like overkill. So if it's something really small that's going to take you know maybe a, a minute or so, and if you know you're not necessarily going to con be concerned if it craps out halfway through, that's fine. It's 